So hello, my name's Rob, this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studio and today I'm going to show you how I adapted some Zone Mortalis tiles to make something a bit more visually interesting. Um, this was great fun to do and it only took uh, about three evenings to complete. Um, I'm going to talk you through my process and uh, how I did it. So first up with the tiles themselves, I had to remove the middle section. I did this by scoring multiple lines uh, with a sharp hobby knife and then using a Stanley knife, which is something I dislike because I lost a finger to that once. Um, I firmly and carefully mark it out and then I come in with the Stanley knife and I just make my final cuts to make sure that everything is all the way through and it's as, I guess, tidy as it could be. I was left with a nice little square, which I will use for later. And all I do now is using a file, I just smooth out the edges to finish it off, just to remove any imperfections. Then I was left with something like this. Now, what I wanted to do was make a little entrance up all the way around and an entrance down on the other side. I looked at certain things like uh, maps on Call of Duty for this, um, whereas for every entrance there, there is to a room, there is also another entrance. So to keep the flow of battle moving, uh, there was no hidey spots or anything like that. What I actually did after trying it with a knife and thinking this is going to take forever, I actually took this piece on and I cut it on the bandsaw at work. Once that was done, I was able to attach um, the stairs. Once that was glued in place, the next step was to put the I guess wall sections in the middle to create a vat of some sorts. Um, I roughly knew where I wanted to go with this build, but a lot of the time it was taking a step back and just looking at what worked and what I can get away with the materials I have. Uh, a note on the bandsaw, uh, do be very careful if you're gonna cut it using big machinery. Um, go slow and take your time. Now, the reason why I've got this bottle here is because I needed a right angle. So using plenty of uh, liquid uh, contact adhesive, I believe it is. Um, I just got my first in place and I pushed the, um, I lent it up against the pot, which gave me a nice straight edge. I wasn't too worried because a lot of this is going to be, I guess, hidden in a way. Um, once both sides were on, um, I gave every edge a quick rough up and it was glued into place. All I did was make sure to be careful and I did leave this for a good hour before continuing on to the next step. Using this pot, which is full of lovely right angles, I just made sure everything was, I guess, uh, as straight as it was going to be in that regard. Um, here I'm quite happy with how it's all looking. Uh, everything's going in the same direction and more than, I guess more importantly, everything is straight. So to save a bit of time, I decided to cut some extra pieces and hide underneath the stairs. This would not only give the uh, piece a bit more added support, it would also uh, make my life a little bit easier with hiding some details. Once they were glued in place, um, and I once again left this for a good hour or so. I flipped it over and all I did was put it flat on my work surface just to make sure that everything was, um, I guess, not wobbly and I'm quite happy with that. See? So next, um, I need to come in with some oil washes. I do a lot of my necromunda scenery with oil washes. It's a great way of making up a lot of um, detail quite quickly. Here I'm using a slightly thicker mix because you are not going to see a lot of this. And I didn't want to, um, I guess, spend a lot of time painting something that you're not going to see. Um, all I do here is I use a big thick shade brush from Games Workshop and I paint it all on the underside of the platform and on the walls. This is just in case that if you are down at eye level, um, 
it will make it quite hard to make out any detail, let alone any at all. Once everything was sufficiently covered and quite dark, I added a bit more white spirit uh, using a pipette to my little pot. I don't bother adding any more paint. Uh, I think I had a couple of extra um, squirts well, hey, to this uh, mixture just till it was up to the brim. And then it was time to apply this after giving it a really good shake. So here, same again, all I'm gonna do is just on the underside and making sure I've got none on the edges as I'm just wiping away now. Um, I wanna keep these as clean as possible to allow the best um, contact to the base plate. All I do is I come in and I just absolutely coat this everywhere. Then uh, under the stairs, anywhere that I think is just not really gonna be seen as much, um, but I still wanted to do something as opposed to just leaving it black or something. After a quick blast with the hairdryer to a drying time, uh, the majority of the difficult work was actually done. Um, all I do is here is I sand all of the edges that will be in contact with the base plate. I put uh, contact adhesive on every single piece that will make contact with the base plate and uh, just ensure that there is a good amount on there. This is Necromunda. I'm not worried about being neat. Because the tiles are duplicates, I actually line it up with the way it would be uh, as if the tiles were sitting on top of each other and then using the squares in the middle because of how neatly I cut them out I was able to accurately line up the squares. Um, this was actually a lot easier um, to do than anticipated you just had to be a bit neater. Now extra thin cement a great tip for this is if you are using this and it starts to run low or it gets a bit old cut up some unpainted sprue and throw it in there and the adhesive will melt the sprue and you will actually make like a plastic gluey goopy putty adhesive which is great because when it hardens it sets like plastic and it creates a really good bond you can use this for gap filling and also it is a fantastic adhesive here all i'm doing is i'm working my way around any cracks um, just to help give the best bond it can get and then we're left with this uh, what i intend on doing now is i'm going to hide these gaps under here by using um, some scenery that i have left over this bit here i'm not going to worry about just yet but i do have a plan in mind um, for it but now we're going to focus on the underside here so i had these pipe pieces i think from the command edition of warhammer 40k and they actually come in two halves although they were just a little bit too tall for um, going under the walkways so what i did was i took a file to the top of them and what I did was I actually got these two little end pieces and I used them to give the illusion of that the ends were actually solid pipe. Although these were actually two halves and the pipe itself was actually two halves as well. And there was no point in me doing it to the corner piece as that joined a slightly different way. This is a great idea because you're not going to see behind it and it made one piece of scenery go twice as far. The plan was to run it along one side of it and then fill in the gap with gribbly bits like I have done here. Um, this is just using some extra pipe pieces, um, the bits that I had shown. All I had to do was file the top of the arches for it to sit under the actual um, walkway, which is great because it added some much needed support and stability to the edges of the platforms. And um, yeah, I just filled in what I thought needed and um, we were well away in that regards. Uh, next what I did was give everything a quick spraying of brown and Rune Lord brass which is a great colour for Necromunda because once you apply an oil wash it makes it go super super grimy and rusty looking. 
using some extra little bits as you can see that I've stuck on there. Uh, there was a pipe coming in, so I do believe it needed to go somewhere. So I just added that little piece. Um, everything's now stuck down nice and hard. It's time for the fun part. And this is oil washes. Once again, I do all my necromunda scenery in oil washes. Uh, you can take it off, you can paint over it, you can really go ham and rusty on it, and I think it gives a really, really good effect. Just make sure everything is coated. Um, I go one way with a brush, I dab it, I um, little circular motions, just so the finish is really, really inconsistent. Um, this stage is admittedly a lot of fun, and as I said, everything gets a good coating of this. Uh, if you want to know the oils that I have used here, I will put a, all the information in the description below uh, so you can replicate my methods. Once again, uh, a little blast with the hairdryer just to speed things along. I only need the majority to be dry and it does dry quickly because white spirit is naturally an evaporative. Um, I was left with something like this. It's nice and dry, and although there are some wet spots, that's not going to matter too much. Now, what I'm gonna do is I've got a uh, cotton pad. This is just a normal one I use for my flawless unblemished skin. And all I'm going to do is get some white spirit. I'm going to decant some into this lid. And then I'm just going to dab this pad into said lid, making sure that it's absorbed a nice amount, but it's not absolutely soaking wet. And then all I'm going to do is just massage it gently over the tiles. And as you can see, it keeps all the dirt in the recess and it just brightens up the tiles. Here I work for all the centers. Um, once again, I go around in a circular motion up and down just to make sure I've got some nice inconsistencies and it looks quite natural where dirt and grime would build up. Same again, along all the walkways, I just work my way around. I leave some dirtier than others. Um, I do some cleaner. I put a lot of pressure on certain ones and vice versa. And it just gives a really easy, natural effect. Now, Necromunda wouldn't be Necromunda without hazard stripes, so I decided to add some to the edge of my board and around the inside. Um, here, it, the white spirit is still a little bit damp, um, but I am nothing but an impatient man. So just taping it to the side and keeping the piece in place, I dab on, using a sponge, uh, this absolutely fantastic cheap craft paint that I actually raided from my kids' art supplies. Uh, I'll be using this again in the future because it isn't a solid colour, it holds its translucency so you see all the detail underneath. And then I was left with this and it's time to focus on the actual sump, which is the centrepiece part of the model for me. So to start with, what I decided to do was to make it like a... Uh, Almost this is where people throw their rubbish and things to get it melted down. Um, to achieve this effect, what I did was get a old brush and using some ready-made filler or spackle from our Across the Pond friends, um, I just dab it into all the areas, working my way all the way around the, um, the piece to make it look like there was you know, some, some melted down stuff and piles of absolute rubbish. Um, I did use some of the Games Workshop skulls as well, as I wanted to give the impression of some unfortunate souls had maybe not taken their health and safety too seriously. Now, uh, my good friend Emma um, does 3D printing and they were kind enough to send me some extra little bits uh, with one of my orders from them, with almost this little barrel, and I wanted to cut it in half to give the illusion of depth. Um, if you are interested in their work, then I will put a link to them in the comments below. Uh, their channel is on, on, under... You should know this by now, Rob. It's on Dark and Wings. And thank you, Emma. So next, it was time to come in with a extremely damp brush 
and I used this to smooth over all the filler to give it a more natural look. Um, I wanted it to look like silt and build up of just melted rubbish. So I also scattered in some extra bits of plastic just to make it look like stuff had been chucked in there. Next, I come in with a Ghrelin Earth um, from Citadel. This is a great texture paint and it's worth noting that not everything was dry at the time of me doing this. Um, I add some water to the lid and I just work it into the filler slash spackle to, I guess, just add a bit of texture to everything. Um, what I'm trying to make here is a bit of a big gloopy mess uh, to try and sell the effect. After I'd done this stage, I washed everything in BL tan green and I painted in some dark green on the lowest spots. This would have effectively become my waterline. Now, Liquitex make this it's a gloss gel you can get this from most art supplies most notably places like hobbycraft in the uk and what this will do is you can paint it on and it gives a great way of uh, replicating uh, puddles uh, small bodies of water um, i've never put this on too thick myself but um, i do believe you probably can build up layer over layer to give a bit of depth and all I do is I work my way around the, um, the actual piece, leaving the raised parts to make it look like they are breaking down slightly slower than everything else. Or there's just an abundance and build up of rubbish in this little hole. So then I was left with this. Um, it's still not quite dry, um, but it will dry clear over the next couple of days. Um, I'm really happy with how this looks. All I'm going to do now is add some gribbly bits, some posters, some extra little just pieces of terrain that I have lying around. And yeah, I think it's time that we can probably cue the money shots here and um, let's see how this turned out. There we are. Um, after adding some barricades and some little bits here and there, I was able to bring this tile to life. Um, although it's not the blank slate all my other tiles are, I did um, have the luxury of being able to cannibalize this for a specific purpose, which is going to be a great little um, objective to fight over, not only in Necromunda, but also out in the ash wastes. Um, the models look fantastic in it, it wasn't that hard to do. A lot of this is just planning, um, which I tend to do a fair bit of these days um, with builds like this. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, if not, thanks for sticking around and I will see you next time. If you do like this content, please do consider subscribing. Uh, it helps me out with the algorithm and all that jazz. Uh, until next time, I will see you all soon and take care.